What if I want to talk to my partner about it because health risks run in their family? It's their family. Who told you about the health risks? Do you think they don't know? Why do you need to talk to them about it? And people want to say, um, it can actually be a risk factor for other diseases like we don't already know. People have literally been saying this shit to me since I was seven years old. Old. Are you ready to hear one of the most selfish fat activists I have ever had the misfortune of listening to? Because I certainly am. Brace yourselves, let's get right into it, I hope you enjoy. I would like to talk very quick about something that annoys me, and I'm going to call it thin-splaining. I just kind of, it's the idea that pe fat people, like, have no idea how to be thin and that's why we're fat. First off, good job on the thin splaining. Not at all trite. Very original indeed. Doesn't make you sound like an angry feminist whatsoever. The people in your movement certainly don't appear to be well informed on the matter of how to be thin. One half is intentionally ignoring the science and is in utter denial. Perhaps some experience a form of double think, but it's clearly not strong enough to influence their position. The other half is verily convinced that the intel they've received from different fat activists is legitimate, trustworthy, and verified, and that these underqualified and therefore certainly unqualified pillocks are uncovering truths that seem so very in evident and entirely inconsistent with biology. They are of course correct, and the millions of qualified health professionals all across our planet are errant or part of some diabolical hoax to gravely deceive all of humanity, and primarily oppress the fat, of course. That is absolutely what has enabled us to to advance and progress so immensely over the past 150 years. Pulling pranks on the commoners. Seriously, get a grip. So people, or like, that we just don't understand health and that's why we are the way that we are, so they want to add their tips. Either you don't understand it or you ignore it or both. I don't know why you're exposing yourself here, but no matter the specific attitude, neither is deserving of an award, is it? Saying that it's not appropriate to talk to your loved ones about their body or their weight gain or loss. And some people are like, what if I want to talk to my partner about it because health risks run in their family? It's their family. Who told you about the health risks? Do you think they don't know? Why do you need to talk to them about it? Because they clearly haven't bloody registered it yet. It hasn't arrived in their hippocampus. What is wrong with you? Are you devoid of empathy? Have you no emotions at all? You people complain when strangers try to address your weight and talk to you about it, claiming it's highly inappropriate to do so and you should mind your business. But when it's your loved ones, the whining continues. Crying and squealing about how you're already aware of this and that you aren't in need of their help. Oh, it's oppressive, it's fat phobic and just rude. I want to eat my 12 glazed donuts and two whole cheesecakes without being disturbed and reminded of the consequences of my gluttony. Clearly, they aren't aware of not only the gravity they emit, but also the gravity of their actions. Some people just need a wake-up call, for goodness sake. People like her seriously incense me with their civil rights-like attitude. There's a reason you don't see an anorexic acceptance movement. Everybody knows it's unhealthy as fuck to be below a certain weight proportional to one's height. And yet she seems to entitled self righteous, arrogant, lazy, and heavy to admit that the same goes for the other extreme. To seriously believe biology made some kind of exception to this and is loving and utterly appreciative of fat, gluttonous, disavowed people while still being angry with anorexic people, then let me break it to you. No, there is no such exception, whether this is to your liking or not. And before you complain that I called you fat, gluttonous, and disavowed, you should probably think about why you're offended. How do you think people would have fed in the wilderness and primitive worlds of our ancestors if they had to roll around like droidicus to hunt some mammoth? Not well, I tell you. I made a video where I said, you can decline getting your weight taken at the doctor's office, and so many people jumped in to say, unless you have anesthesia, unless you're getting a prescription for medication, unless it's this, unless it's that. And I'm like, Fat people know when it's medically necessary. Stop. That is literally the most erroneous but also ironic thing I've heard in a while and it's pretty hilarious. Clearly fat people don't or they wouldn't decline their weight be taken at the doctor's office because being overweight results in the medical necessity of monitoring said weight. I'm not saying you should obsess over it, not at all, that would be a very bad idea, but a measurement at the doctor's cannot be frequent enough to escalate to such a degree in the first place. 
You're aware of your weight or at minimum size before you take on such endeavors. You don't see your doctor every bloody day either, especially not when you're overweight, and it's simply necessary for the doctor to know. Weight is a part of physical health and has the power to severely impair it. It is this woman's cult who cries of how one cannot deduce whether someone is healthy or not based on sole appearance, which I would definitely dispute, but then this cult goes on to thwart any doctor's very next attempt to investigate further by not stepping on the scales. It is natural for people to infer medical possibilities in relation to your size. The same thing happens with alcoholics, it happens with smokers, and it certainly happens with anorexic people. I made a video saying that there are no diseases exclusive to fat people, which there are absolutely not. You say that so proudly as though it makes any difference whatsoever. I could recognize the validity of this and it would change nothing. The amount of times I've seen these people engage in what's known as an ignoratio elenchi is killing me. Nobody ever asserted this to be the case in the first place. It's completely beside the point utterly irrelevant. Your focus should be on the fact that there are diseases to which fat people are hugely more susceptible than normal sized people. But of course you deny that even to be the case, instead throwing in a red herring, disgusting and probably the only thing you wouldn't eat. And people want to say, um, it can actually be a risk factor for other diseases like we don't already know. People have literally been saying this shit to me since I was seven years old. Old. Great, this really is just an attest to your complete lack of responsibility and absence of care then. Bravo, I have never been prouder. You face a list of health complications longer than the duration of the GTA 5 loading screen, but guess what? You could also just join a movement and announce your oppression while feeding your addiction and ignore all the rest. Please go with option B. The path of least resistance needs to be renovated in order to fit you, but it can be done. The only side effect is that you'll die before you see your children grow up. Choose wisely. I know. I don't need your helpful input. Oh, aren't you clever? Yeah, you're so clever, you. At least you recognize it's helpful. Today I started a diet because this shit. <gasps> so I've seen a little bit of discussion around this video, and I've mostly seen people feeling bad for Quinlan because she clearly has some disordered thought patterns. But I honestly don't get it. Shocker, fat activist is ignorant of science. Cue the cries of oppression and complete failure to understand mental health disorders in three, two, one. Like, I don't feel bad for these people anymore. Wow, what an understanding, a nice person you are. I just find it really upsetting that people tend to empathize with thin people who are clearly deathly afraid of becoming fat or having any feature that fat bodies have. Yes, that's what body dysmorphia can do to you. Rather than empathizing with fat people who naturally have roles without contorting their body in a weird way. Wrong, you don't naturally have roles. You don't have roles by contorting your body exotically either. You have roles because you share the diet of Matt Stoney minus the exercise. I absolutely despise it when fat activists act as though having roles the size of Asia with a frequency equal to Nikocado Avocado's toilet trips is natural. Also, we should not emphasize with those in a cognitive state they cannot truly control while emphasizing with those in a cognitive state they got themselves into and are responsible for maintaining. You're despicable. And thinking about how it might affect their psyche to see someone literally gag on the internet at the thought of resembling them. Constant whinging and whining. That would be permissible in the context of early stage weight loss, but you and your smug face are just neglecting your physical well-being and are 400 light years away from exercise. You know what should affect you more than someone gagging at the state of your type of body, which for the record is not immutable and almost always entirely your fault, at least with respect to its consistent maintenance. You know what? your actual body. Now I'm pretty sure it does affect you, not just mentally but physically also. People are right to be averted to obesity and the fact you haven't registered that yet is mind-boggling. Chances are it's you who turned yourself fat and undubitably you who chooses to stay fat. Whether you do change is obviously up to you, but don't dare to act like this self-inflicted predicament was out of your hands.
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did leave a like, if you didn't leave a dislike, don't forget to comment on future video suggestions and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.